Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Racket Quest podcast. Hope you're having a great day so far, and I hope this will help make it a better day. What we're going to do today is talk about the process of stringing a racket, what goes into it, and some of the results numbers that are important to us and should be important to you if you need to correspond in terms of technical issues with a racket. So what I'm going to do is start with uh, our proprietary software and just go right down the list of things that we, we do. And then maybe a little bit later on we can discuss uh, some more detail uh, about uh, it and, and what it means. So every racket is in our database and each racket is, as it comes in, is uh, characterized, I call it, every dimension of the racket, the head width, the length, the head length, the number of uh, main strings, the number of cross strings are um, in, put in the, uh, the database. And so every time we pull up that racket, it will have that information already input into the fields on our uh, uh, software. So the first one is uh, reference tension. Reference tension is typically what you would say to your stringer Please sing this racket at, and I'm going to use real numbers here. Uh, this is a Yonex B Core 98305 uh, with Bob Lot BS Touch Natural Gut in the mains and Ashway Mono Gut ZX17 in the cross strings. So, all of these numbers will be related to that particular racket. Reference tension uh, 57, okay, and that is 25.9 kilos if you happen to be stringing in kilos. Um, and on different machines, my machines, for example, the main would be set at 48.5 uh, pounds and uh, the crosses would be at 30.8. That's not going to be the case with most stringing machines, but uh, ours are, are different. But nonetheless, the reference tension is 57. So most people are going to set their machine at 57 and uh, rock and roll. After the stringing is done, the first number that is taken is a, a dynamic uh, tension, and that is uh, kilograms per centimeter to deflect the bed one centimeter, and in this particular case, it's 38. The second test then goes to the ball block RDC, and the absolute string plane stiffness uh, is 59. The racket is put on a bed and a, a, a load is applied to the string bed, and that number is 59. The next number is uh, <clears throat> a uh, Flex 4 ASPS, and that is a device that also applies a load to the middle of the string bed, but it does not restrict the string. In other words, it's taking the, the racket into consideration and all. So that number is 65. So what we have now from a reference tension of 57 that you walk in and tell your stringer that you would like to have his machine set at, we have 38 kilograms per centimeter. We have 59 units. Uh, I don't know what the algorithm is for the RDC, but it is 59, that's a number. And for the flex four, we have 65. So we have three different numbers uh, that we know. These are absolutes. We know these for a fact. So if you uh, have your racket strung at 57, then your stringer should be able to tell you, okay, the string bed stiffness is X. Okay, whatever device they use, that's the same device they're going to use for every racket. So it should be relative to uh, every racket. So that's a number. The next number is racket flex. And this is done on an RDC, and the racket is put in the device, and the load is applied to the tip, and that uh, stiffness is measured again in in units, um, and it's 61. Okay, that would put it in the medium soft range of of racket stiffness. The next number is gram weight, and this particular racket weighs 341 grams. That converts to 12.03 uh, ounces. Balance in millimeters is 326.0, and that in inches is 12.83. The static balance is what that is, and that is a, a number that is uh, most often referred to as making the racket head heavier, head light. But as we'll discuss later, and maybe have in the past, 
uh, inertia or swing weight is is the most important number uh, of a racket uh, until uh, impact, and then after impact, the uh, the static balance or the center of gravity will uh, come uh, will become into play. Obviously, the next number is polar moment, and polar moment is actually just the the polar stability of a racket. In other words, how much is it going to resist twisting if you hit off center? In other words, way at the top of the racket or way at the bottom of the racket in the width of the racket, not the length, in the width. So uh, polar moment is 357.0 and the swing weight, which is done on a machine, the RDC and, and others, uh, is 338.0. So the difference between those two numbers is the torsional stability and on this racket is 19, which is fairly high. In other words, if you think of torsional stability, the farther off to the center of the racket the edges of the frame are, the higher the torsional stability will, will be. So a very, very, very wide racket will have a lot of torsional stability or a narrow racket with weight added at the center at three and nine will also increase the uh, torsional stability. Uh, the length is, is taken, and that uh, this racket is 68.4 uh, centimeters, which converts to 26.929 inches uh, long. The next number is derived right from the Bobla RDC. Uh, RDC power is 45. RDC control is 56. RDC maneuverability is 61. So you can see as the uh, power goes up, the maneuverability probably will go down. Head points. This is, comes to play when people say, well, the racket is three, four, five head points, head light or head heavy. It's calculated the head points are 5.04. Okay, head, head points that will be light. And then that calculates head weight percentage. So 47.7% of all the weight of this racket is toward the head. In other words, so this is head light. The next number is center of percussion. And this, quite frankly, is uh, is fairly important to us, but I don't know that very many people calculate it. But the center of percussion is where you're going to hit the ball and feel very little, uh, very little shock. In other words, the, the the whole racket and bulk impact are going to be fairly nice feeling. And this particular case is 21.2 inches from the butt cap of the racket. Okay. And we calculate maneuverability uh, as well, but it's a reciprocal of power. So in this particular case, it's 1.09. So you've got uh, a good maneuverability versus power value. So maneuverability is 1.09 and power value is 0.99. It's just a reciprocal of that. So, and from there we calculate the uh, power, and we can calculate it as based on the weight, the length, the head size, the stiffness of the string bed, etc. So the power calculation for this racket is one nine eight seven point two. Okay, it's a fairly powerful racket. The calculated swing weight is the next number on the database, and it is calculated. The calculation is m d squared, which is the mass times distance to the center point times the distance to the center point. So and this case is 362.4. So you see there's a difference because the calculated power, the calculated swing weight is from the very edge of the butt cap and the machine swing weight is from 10 centimeters in front of the butt cap. So there's always going to be a difference, but it can be calculated MD squared. Effective stiffness is a number we do. We can calculate it. We can also uh, see it on our flex four machine. And the effective stiffness is the product of the reciprocal, the string bed stiffness, and the racket stiffness. Okay, and in this particular case, the effective stiffness is thirty. In other words, every time you hit the ball, you're here, you're feeling thirty pounds of of, of resistance uh, in the string bed and the racket combination. The head area is calculated in this particular case is ninety six point four. And this is a 98 square inch racket, so that's that's within range. And the head area in centimeters is 621.8, um, which is not not unusual to see it in centimeters typically. In the U.S. market, it's mostly square inches.
head width is taken when the racket is, is first brought in. And the head width of this racket is 9.63 inches, 26.4 centimeters. And the length is 12.75 inches and 32.39 centimeters. And from there, we can calculate uh, string, average string spacing, uh, et cetera. We'll get to that in just a little bit later. But the, uh, the, the number of main strings is 16. The number of cross strings is 19. And based on the length and width, number of main strings versus the number of cross strings, I calculate a ratio. This is the natural ratio of the racket, and it's 0.636. In other words, in a perfect world, which our machines are essentially a perfect world, the ratio between the main string setting and the cross string tension is, six, is 0.636, okay? Um, the dwell time, which is how long the string is on the, the racket, uh, and the racket is not being swung, so this is a longer dwell time, but this takes the player out of the equation. The dwell time of this racket is 8.28 milliseconds. Okay? The main grid, in other words, how far apart the left main and the right main are apart, is 9.8 inches. And that allows me to calculate the average uh, string spacing, which gives me an idea of how much the strings are going to move and how long they're going to last. The cross grid is 9.8 inches. So from there, we can arrive at the, uh, uh, the actual ratio. The dynamic uh, tension we talked about earlier is uh, kilograms per centimeter. And that converts to 212.5 pounds per inch. In other words, it takes 212 pounds to move that string bed one inch, and that's, that's a lot, okay? The first moment is exactly what you feel when you pick the racket up. Uh, it's the first moment is in newton meters, but it's 0.856 newton meters, and that's important when you pick up a racket the first time. You typically shake it up and down. You don't swing it, and that's what you're feeling, the first moment. So uh, eight is, uh, is a, a pretty hefty uh, uh, first moment, a good one, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and that converts to the, the Flex 4 uh, ASPS of 65 converts to 189.1 pounds per inch. So I do everything in pounds per inch because it's much easier to, uh, to understand, in, in my opinion. Uh, recoil weight is the weight that is important if you are not swinging the racket very hard, as in a volley, for example, is 166.29, and that is on the the desirable side. Anything under 150 is probably not a really good volleying racket because the racket is not moving. So you have that mass uh, sort of divided between the head of the racket and your hand, and the more mass you have at your hand, the higher the recoil weight is going to be. The twist weight is, is exactly that. How much is the, is the weight of the racket if you hit it off center? And this one has a 236.81 twist weight, which is which is very good. So essentially, this racket is a very, very solid, very stable uh, hitting racket. Uh, the string uh, average string spacing for the mains is 0.438 inches, and not quite a half an inch. And the average cross spacing is 0.516. That's a fairly open. Uh, string pattern for 16 by 2019. Uh, the short side of the string is 9.7 inches and the total length needed to string this racket is 37. The, the other things we do that are important to us but don't show up very many places is a uh, tip weight and end weight. This is a two scale system that automatically calculates to a tenth of a gram the static balance and the end weight of this racket, and the end weight would be the butt cap area, is 1.33, and the top is 2.07 uh, grams. Okay, and that that tells me the total weight of the racket, but how it's distributed, it calculates the uh, swing weight. Another thing we do is a torsional accuracy uh, test, and it's three scales in the racket. The, the butt is on one scale, and the upper side of the head and the lower side of the head are on two different scales. And in this particular case, the, uh, the up, in other words, the, the, the top of the head at the midpoint is 105.3, and the down, I call it, is 1.408.
104.8. 